Hey folks, it's Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. We're going out, we're gonna be working on some fences. We got this tractor right here. It's a Case International 55. Got a post driver on there. We're gonna get busy knocking some posts in the ground. Gonna teach you a little bit along the way. And hope you have a good time with it. All right, woo! Stony Ridge. Phone. Got a phone call Whoa. from my neighbor here. This is Brian. Brian called me up and said, hey, I'm working on the fence today, man. You wanna come over here and give me a hand? I said, you daggone right, cause I'm gonna need some help when it comes time to build my fence. So we've got post lined up and we've got a post driver on the tractor over there. I'll take you over, show you the tractor, show you the post driver and show you the process. Now guys, why would a person want to have these little birds right here, okay? Why would they want guineas? If any of you guys have guineas, post a comment down there. Tell me why a person would want guineas. Here's what we have. We've got a case tractor. We've got a post driver right here. And basically this machine just comes down and smacks these posts into the ground. Brian, tell me how this thing works. Does it level itself or? Uh, you have three levers. Yeah, you of course you up and down stroke. And then you have a, a side tilt and then a, a back and forth tilt. Okay. Or uh, vertical. So you can tilt it this way and that way and level it up here. Now, does it have a built-in level on it or? I usually just eyeball it. We're not trying to get real precise and level. Gotcha. Yeah, just a good eyeball. Cool. Old Stony Ridge Farmer figure out a way right here. We have a level glued right to the side of that thing <laughs> right there. Maybe a couple levels because I got too much OCD going on. This is a 55 horsepower case and it's about the minimum to required to run a post driver due to the flow of hydraulic. You gotta have a pretty good size hydraulic pump inside your tractor to, to be able to use one of these. Let's take you guys in a little bit closer and show you the controls. So this control here moves it, moves this boom. This is the side, uh, vertical. That way and that way. And then this control here moves it that way and that way. And then this works the driver and that's on a big old hydraulic cylinder and a spring. So these little hydraulic cylinders are what moves it side to side. And this hydraulic cylinder is what drives up the driver. And then there's a big spring in here. And the spring tension is what pulls that driver down and smacks that post. So smack, smack. And you'll get to see the smack here in just a second. So if you're new to fencing and you're new to building fences, what you have to do, and you can see right here, there's a line. This is mason string and you draw a straight line. So you set your corner post and then you draw your mason string really tight between your post here. And that makes your straight line. That's your straight edge. Then you butt your outside of your post up to that line. Now you don't want to push the line. You just want them barely touching and that makes a nice, straight, even fence line. Just like that. What we're doing now is we're setting our string for this run of post, okay? That's it. Brian is out here and he's stretching the string tight. You can see the string right here going all the way down through there. What we've got to do, we're making our next line. All the posts are already laid out. He's got the markings laid out. I think it's 10 feet between posts. Some folks have posts that are flat top like this. Some folks cut them like down like that. Some folks leave them alone. Some folks even nail a little piece of tin right there to the top. Odds are the post is going to run off in the ground before the top of the post ever thinks about rotten. A little postology for you. He's tying it off back there at the end. And if I'd have been smart, I'd have worn my daggone mud boots. I'll give you some slack. All right, hang on. That wind's blowing that string. How that? So a little back history on the Stony Ridge Farmer on myself. I used to build fences. When I was in college, I put myself through school with a handyman business. So what I normally do when you're stringing, this ain't my job, it's Brian's job. So what I normally do is I'll take my drill and I'll drill me a screw right in here so I can wrap my string around and tie it off really tight. That's what I normally do when I do mine. Or I'll just drive a nail in right there and that way I can wiggle that nail out and move on to the next post whenever I get ready to tighten another string, run a string line. So guys, let's get busy here. We'll fire the tractor up, we'll drive some posts. I think my job is gonna be sitting on the tractor. <laughs> here and got to scratching our heads of how we're we gonna put this post in here the right way without getting mired up in the mud. I think we got a solution. We're gonna back the tractor in this little spot. Alright y'all, 
So here we are getting ready to drive a post. And we've got a level up. You can see we've got to level up the boom here. And you'll get to see the post driver pounding them down. And basically we're going to do this all the way down the fence line here. And we'll just keep on moving, keep on getting it. And we'll get back and talk to you a little bit more after we get done. we got to get it done. It's getting dark. So the guy's job on the tractor here, we give it a little bit of gas, we bring the boom down and we set this down, this apparatus, this post driving apparatus, we set it down on the ground and then I'll engage right here the rear hydraulics and he'll get to work. So here we go, we'll engage and now he'll level it up and he'll start driving. It's it loud. good the reverse procedure is I'm gonna raise my lift which raises the post driver you see it back there moving make sure we got it off the ground to get good clearance and then we'll put our tractor in forward put a drive on it. now a little bit of the science behind all this as he drives the post, there's a mark on the post driver back there. He drives his post down to that mark. Now you're within two or three inches on every post in the same height. I'm learning as I go too. Guys, this is my first time ever participating in uh, building a fence with a post driver. It's cool. It's an interesting process if you've never seen it. That's for sure. I'm learning something today. So don't forget to click that like button. If you like what you see here, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, click that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And Leave me some comments down there if you know some tips and tricks, if you've ever done this before. It's pretty fun. I love to build stuff. I just like to look back at a day's work and see what I built. That thing's loud, isn't it? <laughs> Let it rip! Woo! Woo! <laughs> it's a beast. So Brian's telling me this is a shaver model right here, and that's 80,000 pounds of force. I want to show you the top of the post, what the top of the post looks like, because I was concerned about driving post because I thought it might splinter and bust up the top of the post, but it really didn't do that. Look at it here. So that's the top of your post, and it really didn't hurt it at all. If anything, it just prolonged the life of the post, don't you think? Sometimes you'll get a post that, if you see a crack in the top, yeah. you better keep a good eye on it because it can bust out. So all these things are good things to consider when we get ready to put the post in the ground at the Stony Ridge Farm. Now we've got a lot of fence to build on the Stony Ridge Farm. I think it'd be a great idea to invest in a nice new piece of equipment. It's a good thing. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us here. I'm going to get you a shot here during the end credits of us finishing the fence up. So I just want to thank you a whole lot for coming and I hope you learned a little bit of something today with us. And be sure and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and introduce a new friend, a new neighbor to the channel. So kind of cool. Thanks a lot guys. His grandpa is the one that owned most of the Stony Ridge Farm that we bought. 140 acres of the Stony Ridge Farm is his grandpa's old land. Nice. Good fella. Good times. We'll see you guys next time, all right? Take care. Woo! Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Running that tractor and doing stuff like this, just uh, to me, it's what makes the world go round. When you're working like this, there's nothing on your mind in the in the whole world besides what you're doing, and it's very peaceful. I find a lot of peace in working with heavy equipment and working with tractors and stuff. And I can understand why people would want to do that for a living. Brian's a good guy. I'm learning a little bit from him today, and hopefully he'll come help me when it comes time to build my fence. That's what neighbors do.
good neighbors. I had to get myself some daggone uh, earplugs. I didn't bring my earplugs out. I don't want to be that old man's deaf farmer. I don't want to be that guy, so. Eh, what's that you say? No, sir, not me. My, all right, sometimes you gotta do it three or four times. <laughs> it's March, it's March, is it March? It is March. Yeah. Say so you bought that shirt last week at Kmart. Yeah, yeah. So, it just don't last like it used to. That's not Adidas, that's adios. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we'll see you next time see on Stony Ridge Farm. Appreciate it.